Hey, one challenge we often have in software development is that we have a bunch of data which is usually maybe in some sort of tabular form and we need to get that into our database, be that SQL Server or MySQL or whatever it is. And often that involves a lot of manual work. One way this can sometimes be sped up is to use Microsoft Excel to do some sort of processing on the data and to generate insert statements. And today I'm going to show you that and I'm going to show you some useful Excel functions that can help with that. And these are text join, concat, substitute, and text. And we're going to go through a worked example. If that's useful, stick around and I'm going to walk you through it. Let's imagine that we have a table called sales contacts and it has columns, name, address, telephone, and email. It's already containing some data, but our client would like us to load some more data and they've provided it. Here it is in this picture. Great. So how can we get this into the SQL database? Well, we can use Excel to help us out. Here's the first trick. Zoom in to the data to get it as big as possible. Use the Windows Shift S combination, which is built into OneNote for doing a screenshot. Select all of the data, which is copying it to the clipboard. Jump into Microsoft Excel. Click on the data tab and then paste from picture, picture from clipboard. Excel will now do its best to interpret that picture and turn it into text, and we can then review each item. First name looks good, last name looks good, zip code looks good, Burks, that's correct. Deborah, it should be Deborah.Burks. Then push insert data. We now have a table of data that we can actually work with to get into our SQL Server. Our next challenge is, is we can see that the columns here do not actually match up with the format of our database. We have name. Our source data has first name and last name. And we have address but our source data has street, city, state, and zip. This is where Excel can help us out again with a wonderful function called text join. Let me show you. First, let's format as a table. Control T is the shortcut. Now we can use the text join function. It goes like this, text join, then the delimiting character. In this case, we want to use a space between the names. Then we type false, and then we select the relevant cells that we want to concatenate with the space. That solves our problem for names. We had the same problem for addresses, so let's deal with that as well using the same technique. Text join. Space is a delimiter. False. and the fields. Let's deal with the remaining columns. So we need the phone number and we need the email address. So now we've got the data ready and we could start making our insert statement, right? Well, we could, but Excel could save us a lot of time rather than us formatting this in the, the, the window. Let me show you how. We can use the text join function again. For our insert statement, we're going to want an open bracket and apostrophe. We're going to want our fields. which we can concatenate with an apostrophe, a comma, and then another apostrophe. And then the fields. That's starting to look like an insert statement, isn't it? We can finish it off. Trap for young players, sometimes apostrophes you may need to deal with by doing something like this. 
So this now is almost the lines that we need for our insert statement. And then we could do something like this. Insert into, and then our table. Then we need to list the column names. Well, we could even use the text join for putting those together, but it's probably just as quick for this, these four to, to grab it from my existing select. And then we put values. And we may want to also put a comma in the end of all of these actually. Except for the last one. And then if we've done this right, I should be able to run this statement and insert the data. So let's see. And we can see our new contacts have been put into the, the table. Can you see the issues? We have a tab character on the front of these names and these nulls are not real nulls. So how can we deal with that? I'll clear the data out and we'll do it again. So we can see here that this part and this part are on separate cells. And if I paste that into here, we end up with this leading tab. So let's deal with that. We can use a different Excel function called concat. And that will join the parts together without introducing any white space. So that's solved problem number one. The other problem, however, is this null. We want this to be a real null, not the text of the word null. We can use a different technique to deal with that. Excel has a function called substitute. We can specify the text we want to process. And then the old text that we want to replace, which in this case is that apostrophe null apostrophe and then what we want to replace it with, which is just null. So now when I paste it in, we can see our nulls will come in as real nulls. So let's do that. I'll clear the old data. back to the original status. So now let's do our import. And we can see now we don't have the problem with the leading space and our nulls are true nulls. There is one other challenge we can solve though. What if we needed to insert date information? So let's add a column for the date. And we'll put it in in a few different ways that maybe you might receive it from a client. I think we get the idea. We can come in many different shapes and forms. So over here on our um, processing, what we're going to do is we're going to use another function which is called text. And it can take a value and format it in a format that's useful for importing into Excel, like year, 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 month, month, DD, or sorry, for importing into SQL. That's much more friendly, right? So now we'll just hook that into our other um, code here. So we got the date as well. And we'll make this a little bit wider so we can see that they're all there. 
and that will flow through into here. So now we just need, this is the data that we want to import. And I'm going to make it have, use this created column for that, for the date to be put in. And I'm just going to clear out the data again that we had from before. And that's what we want to get rid of. So we've got clean original stuff and then let's load in our new stuff. And we can see we've loaded in all of the date information here. That is some tips and tricks on how you can use Excel to import data into your SQL database or any, any database really. You could take it, a, and you could take it a step further. You could actually build yourself a generic spreadsheet that you could use for importing this information. And I did that for myself a while ago where you can pass in any table and it will generate the appropriate insert statement. So if that's something that you would feel would be useful, leave a comment in the description and I may make a video about how to build that generic spreadsheet. Thanks very much.